the madness of Mr. Crouch. I want to go a few pages into the chapter when uh, 540-541. Hermione mentions having taken out a subscription to the Daily Prophet because she's tired of hearing news from overhearing the Slytherins and such and from Malfoy kind of bringing things to their attention. And on 541, <clears throat> a letter gets dropped for her that has, as we are told, uh, composed from pasted letters that seem to have been cut out of the Daily Prophet. In other words, classic kind of serial murderer um, type of warning. You are a wicked girl. Harry Potter deserves better. Go back where you came from, muggle. And she gets more than one like that. Okay? That's as a, as a result of Rita Skeeter's article about Harry being in love with Hermione and all that kind of nonsense. Okay? So skip over a few more pages to 546, 47. Hermione's been trying to figure out how Rita Skeeter got her information that she has published in several of her articles. For example, how did she overhear Hermione talking to Victor Crumb? How did she overhear uh, Hagrid talking to Madame Maxine? So on 547, we're told she sticks around in defense against the dark arts for a few minutes afterwards to ask Moody something. She comes back to Ron and Hermione, uh, Ron and Harry, and says, "Well, she's not using an invisibility cloak." Moody says he didn't see her anywhere near the judges' table at the second task, or anywhere near the lake. Now remember, she got information she only could have gotten if she was at one of those two locations. All right? Ron, is there any point in telling you to drop this? No. I want to know how she heard me talking to Victor, how she found out about Hagrid's mom. Harry, maybe she had you bugged. Now, Harry's thinking what? <clears throat> yeah, our world listening device of some sort. Ron, bugged? Ron doesn't have a clue what Harry's talking about. Would Mr. Weasley? Maybe. Would Mr. Weasley be interested? Definitely. Okay. What, put fleas on her or something? Okay. Notice how, you know, we use that term, or that term is used in, you know, spycraft movies and all that kind of stuff. And yet, when Ron says, put fleas on her or something, how he takes it literal. And yet it is kind of literal. Because what is a quote-unquote electronic bug? It is something usually very small to be overseen, like a bug would that would be crawling on you, okay? Okay. Harry started explaining about hidden microphones, recording equipment. Ron's fascinated. Hermione, however, <coughs> is kind of put out because obviously Harry hasn't read Hogwarts of History yet. No electronic, no electrical devices. She says there's too much magic around here. Ron, haven't we got enough to worry about? In other words, you're worried about this because some private conversation you had has been spilled a little bit. Hermione's going, however, a little bit deeper than that. It's more than just personal with her. Okay? So she doesn't give up on it. They write to Percy to find out what's going on with Mr. Crouch. He says, you know, he's taking some well-deserved time off. So third task is coming up, and Ludo Bagman tells all of them what the third task is. There's a maze. Pages 5, <coughs> probably 551 and following. Because 552 and following, we get Harry go off alone with Victor Crumb. Okay? Now, what has Sirius been warning him all year long? Ever since he got the first letter back from Sirius regarding um, his scar hurting. Don't go off with anyone. Don't do anything stupid. You know, stick close to Dumbledore and Moody. Okay. 
So Victor Crum wants to talk to Harry after they find out about the mazes. So they do, and what does Crum want to talk about? Hermione. Hermione. Why? Louder? He seems, like he seems to actually like her. He wants to know what's going on because Rita Skeeter's kind of scoop implies that there's something else. And Harry's like, don't worry about it. Nothing. Their little conversation gets interrupted on page 553. Harry is talking to him, says, you know, I saw you at the Quidditch World Cup, the Ronsky faint, you really. But something moved behind Crumb in the trees, and Harry, who had some experience of the sort of thing that lurked in the forest, well, what's the sort of thing that lurks in the forest? Okay, first book, Voldemort. Second book, giant man-eating spiders. Third book, werewolves. Thank you. <coughs> In other words, you don't want to go too far unless you're with Hagrid. He instinctively grabbed Crumb's arm and pulled him around. Notice, instinctively, what's Harry doing? He's protecting. Okay? What is it? Harry shook his head, staring at the place where he'd seen movement. He slipped his hand inside his robes, we reaching for his wand, reaching for his wand, it's going to be that kind of day when it's happening this early. <laughs> Suddenly, a man staggers out from behind a tall cloak. It's Barty Crouch. He looked as though he'd been traveling for days. The knees of a... What does that mean? Traveling how? Not apparating from one place to another. Yeah, on foot. <clears throat> the knees of his robes were ripped and bloody. His face scratched. He was unshaven and gray with exhaustion. How does this compare with Barty Crouch when we see him at the beginning of the novel? Neat hair and mustache, both in need of a wash and trim. But that's nothing compared to how he's behaving. Muttering, gesticulating, talking to someone. Only he could see. What does that mean? Yeah, man, he is crazy. <clears throat> Okay. So Harry tries to talk to him, and it's clear he's trying to talk to Weatherby. <laughs> okay. So Crouch is like, what, uh, um, Crumb is like, what's wrong with him? Harry, no idea. Top of 555. Dumbledore. Bottom of 555 is when Crouch says Dumbledore. I need to see Dumbledore. Harry, okay, okay, well, I've done stupid thing. Notice, he looked utterly mad. His eyes were rolling and bulging. This is the top of 555. A trickle of spittle sliding down his chin. Every word he spoke seemed to cost him a terrible effort. Must tell Dumbledore. Harry, I'll, I'll take you to him. Who, you, student, school, you're not his, no. Dumbledore's? Yes. <coughs> Warren Dumbledore. He can't even form complete sentences. Why not? Is he mad? Is he crazy? No, he's not. Well, not yet. <laughs> What's wrong with him? He's fighting off the imperious curse. Okay? Notice. Go back to the beginning where we see Mad-Eye Moody, a.k.a. Barty Crouch Jr., okay, teaching how to throw off an imperious curse. What does it take? Strength of character. Harry does it on his fourth attempt. Barty Crouch Jr. is having trouble, excuse me, Barty Crouch Sr. is having trouble throwing it off. What does that tell us about Harry compared to Barty Crouch Sr.? Stronger character. And yet, Barty Crouch Sr. had been tipped for a minister of, of magic. After he was fully grown, fully qualified, etc. Okay. 
So he starts talking about Weatherby again. Harry gets ready to leave. He tells Crumb, you stay with him. Smart move on Harry's part? No. Why not? Harry can't be in two places at once, can he? No. Okay, time turner. <laughs> Sorry, forgot that big gaping hole. Yes, he could be in two places at once, but he doesn't have a time turner. So, Oxio time, you know. <laughs> how far does the Oxio spell work? You know, does it have to be within a certain geographical limit? What could he do? He could attempt to take him up to the castle. Is Barty Crouch really seemingly in a position to be moved much? Probably not. I mean, say that again. He could have sent Crumb to go get Dumbledore, but what's the problem with that? Crumb doesn't know where Dumbledore's office is, nor does he know Lemon Drops. That's the other thing. Stun him and do a levitating spell like Snape does, you know, in Prisoner of Estimate, and walk him on up to... But he's a nice kid, you know. You shouldn't stun your elders. <laughs> okay. Harry says, I'll get Dumbledore. I'll be quicker. I'll know where his office is. Notice, he's thought about sending Crumb. Okay. Crumb. He's mad, in other words. To leave me alone with him. Why else should he not leave Barty Crouch Jr.? Excuse me. Barty Crouch Sr. with Crumb. What's the elephant in the room you're all missing? Say that again louder. Why not? Karkaroff is what? Former Death Eater. Okay. What did, as we're going to find out later, what did he do to get out of Azkaban? Sold out everybody else. Named names. Okay? In other words, he's a snitch. Who hates snitches? Those who are snitched on, usually. Okay? He grabs Harry. Don't leave me. I escaped. Must warn. Must tell. See Dumbledore. My fault. All my fault. Bertha. Dead. Where has Harry heard the name Bertha before? His dream opening chapter. Ludo Bagman mentions the name. Um, Percy mentions the name that, you know, she's missing. Who does he hear more about her from? Sirius. And then later on, Dumbledore. Not much later on after this. Okay? Yeah, I think, believe there was an article about Bertha Jorkins missing. Okay? All my fault. My son. My fault. Tell Dumbledore. Harry Potter. The Dark Lord. Stronger. Harry Potter. So, you know, what should Harry be thinking at this point? Don't leave him alone. Dark Lord, Harry Potter, same sentence. Not a good mix. Okay? Especially when you get a bunch of my faults included in there. That tells you. Something is wrong, okay? So, Harry runs off, and who stops him? Snape. Why does Snape stop him? Thank you. Because he can. Why else? Because he's Harry. Would Snape have stopped him if this were, I know it's hard to imagine this, but... If this were Malfoy, no. taking him right to. Okay, so Harry does see Dumbledore. Tells him about Mr. Crouch down in the forest, page five fifty eight. Wants to see you. Dumbledore says, "Lead the way." What did Crouch say? Harry says, "Said he wants to warn you. Done something terrible. Mentioned his son, Bertha Jorkins." Okay, so what you mentioning his son? Suggest because what have we what have we been told about his son by 
I'm going to get the names mixed up. Serious. He's dead. How long is he dead? Sirius says he died, or he, he was brought in about a year after Sirius was there. He died quickly. How long was Sirius in Azkaban? Remember the prophecy? At the end of Prisoner of Azkaban? Oh, yeah, yeah. What was the prophecy? So a faithful servant who has been what? Chained. For the last 12 years. Is that faithful serving Peter Pettigrew? Or is it Barty Crouch Jr. who throws off the imperious curse after 12 years? Because that novel ends and this one begins. And what do we hear? We hear about the plot. Okay? So, Bertha Jorkins, Voldemort, Voldemort getting stronger. So they get down there and they find what? An uncrouches, un, sorry, uncrouches, man. Mm -hmm. Unconscious Victor Crumb. <clears throat> okay, and Crouch is gone. All right. Crumb comes to 561. Says he was attacked, Mr. Crouch, whatever his name. Crouch attacked you? Crouch attacked you? Karkaroff yells, treachery. Says something about Dumbledore. What does Hagrid do? <laughs> Down, boy. You know, Dumbledore essentially has to yell to um, Hagrid. So, Harry goes back up to the school. And he has a dream. Um, before he has that dream, 565, 566, Harry, Ron, and Hermione are talking about what could have happened to Mr. Crouch and what would have happened if Harry hadn't been delayed by Snape. Page 566. If Snape hadn't held me up, we might have got there in time. The headmaster is busy, Potter. Why couldn't he have just gotten out of the way? Ron, maybe he didn't want you to. Maybe, come on, hang on. How fast could he have gotten there? Down to the forest. You reckon he could have beat you in Dumbledore? Not unless he can turn himself into a bat or something. Why does she throw that little line out? Misdirect us. She wants her readers to think Snape is a vampire of some sorts. I know, he's out in the sun and all that kind of stuff. Okay? But she continually uses this bat imagery for Snape. All right. Hermione says, we need to see Professor Moody. We need to find out whether he found Mr. Crouch. Harry, if he had the Marauder's map on him, it would have been easy. Right? Because what does the Marauder's map show? It shows whoever is on the grounds. Okay? and where they are on the grounds. So, skipping a bunch, Harry gets a letter from Sirius, 572. Harry, what do you think you were playing at walking off into the forest with Victor Crumb? I want you to swear, if I return to L, you're not going to go walking with anyone else at night. No dates for Harry, in other words. There's somebody highly dangerous at Hogwarts. It's clear to me that they wanted to stop Crouch from seeing Dumbledore, and you were probably feet away from them in the dark. You could have been killed. Your name didn't get into the Goblet of Fire by accident. Okay, now how's he treating Harry at this point? Like a child. Do you think Harry knows his name didn't get in there by accident? If someone's trying to attack you, they're on their last chance. Meaning, it's the third task. Time's running out. Stay close to Ron and Hermione. Do not leave Gryffindor Tower after hours. Arm yourself for the third task. Practice stunning and disarming. Notice he doesn't say, throw in a little Avada Kedavra while you can. You know. A few hexes wouldn't go amiss either. Nothing you can do about Crouch. Keep your head down. Look after yourself. Does Harry usually keep his head down? Think about it for a moment. 
He tries. As he continually tells people, does he go looking for trouble? No. Trouble just finds him. It's like he's got a bullseye on the back that says, trouble, here. And it sticks to him. Okay? So, he falls asleep in, what class does he usually fall asleep in? Divination. Divination. And he has a dream, and he hears an insect buzzing. And in the dream, what does he see? Pages 5, 76, 77. It's not really a dream, though. Okay. I mean, I know that's what it's described as. Wormtail's being punished. And we see 577. Crucio. Wormtail screams. And Harry calls, screams out, and wakes up. And he says, I need to go see Dumbledore. Ready? He goes up to Dumbledore's office, page 579, and he hears voices through the door. And he stands there long enough to listen to the voices. Dumbledore, I'm afraid I don't see the connection. Don't see it at all, says Cornelius Fudge. Ludo says Bertha, Bertha's perfectly capable of getting herself lost. I agree, would have, we would have expected to have found her by now, but all the same, we've no evidence of foul play, Dumbledore, none at all. As for her disappearance being linked to Barty Crouch's, Moody, and what do you think's happened to Barty Crouch, Minister? Two possibilities. Crouch is finally cracked, more than likely, or he's gone off wandering somewhere, uh, and gone off wandering somewhere, or, well... I'll reserve judgment until I've, after I've seen the place where he is found. And you say it was just past the Bobaton cottage? Dumbledore, you know what that woman is. What does he mean? She's a giant. What's Fudge showing? Racism. Racism, prejudice. I consider her to be a very able headmistress. Come on, Dumbledore, don't you think they might be, you might be prejudiced in her favor because of Hagrid? They don't all turn out harmless. I no more suspect Madame Maxime than Hagrid. I think it is possible that it's you who are prejudiced, Cornelius. So, Harry knocks on the door. Moody says, Potter's outside waiting for you. And he goes in while they leave. He looks around. The office is the same as it's been before. It's got all kinds of interesting contraptions. But then in one bookcase, some kind of case, he sees this strange, glowy kind of light. Page 583. A shallow stone basin with odd carvings, runes, and symbols. Silvery light coming from the contents. <clears throat> Harry wants to see what that stuff is. Pulls out his wand, looks around, prods them. A swirl. He bends closer, closer. What does he finally do? Remember what Gladriel tells Harry? Don't touch the mirror. He touches the mirror, so to speak, and as with Tom Riddle's diary, pops right in. Okay. What's the difference between the pensive and Tom Riddle's diary? Okay, Tom Riddle's diary was doctored. It's not necessarily the truth. There's also two personalities. Okay. So what do you do if you keep a diary or a journal? You're writing your perspective, right? You're writing down the things, maybe of that day, that week, etc., that are important to you and why. It's a way of thinking about things that have happened, okay? How's that different from a pensive? Pensive's like video recording. Okay. Kind of like a flash drive, like for your memory. Okay. Can you... 
trying to think how to put this. When you write in a diary, what do you do? Okay, but you're not merely, as with a flash drive, you're not downloading, right? You're not just spitting out everything that's up here. What are you doing? Editing. You're selecting. You're choosing what's important, what's unimportant. Okay? You know, writing a diary is like watching the evening news or cable news. Everything you see on that is what? It's edited. It's selected so that you see certain things and don't see other certain things. Why? Because whoever's doing the editing, whoever's anchoring the news, wants you to see certain things and doesn't want you to see other certain things. Is the pensive like that? Or does the pensive merely, you do this and that. It just retracts everything that goes in and you put it aside. Rowling's not actually clear about that. She's not clear because Dumbledore says, you know, you use the pensive to do what? To take some thoughts off your mind so that you can think about other thoughts. So what does that mean? That does mean you can select the thoughts that come out. Okay? So can you then edit them? Have we seen a pensive yet before this? No. Are we going to see a pensive later? Yes, we are. Okay. And it's going to be interesting the way the next time we see the pensive, it works. Because Harry's going to go into a pensive again, and he's not going to stay with the person whose thoughts it is. He's going to go off with somebody else at the time of the memory, even though what those other people are doing at the time of the memory are not part of that individual's memory. This is another, it's a huge flaw. Okay? But this time, he goes in and he sees whose memories, whose thoughts, Dumbledore's. He finds himself in a room. There's Dumbledore next to him. He says, sorry, didn't mean to. Dumbledore doesn't respond. He looks beyond Dumbledore. There's Moody, a little less beat up. <coughs> okay. And Karkaroff gets brought in. Karkaroff is questioned. There's Barty Crouch. Younger, not crazy. Karkaroff gets grilled. Notice when he's brought in and put in the chair, what happens? The chains wrap up around him. Right? And what does Karkaroff do? Man, he spills the beans. Who does he name? Uh, 589. Antonin Dolohoff. We're going to see Dolohoff in the next book. We're going to see him in this book, but we're going to uh, actually take that back. We're not. We're going to see him in the next book. Okay? He says, I saw him torture muggles. Moody helped him do it. Okay? Who else does he name? Uh, Rosier. Evan Rosier. He's dead. Uh, who else? Travers, the McKinnons, Mulsiber, got all of them. Rookwood. Rookwood? Here's a name we haven't gotten before. Augustus Rookwood of the Department of Mysteries. The very same. More? No, no, no. I've got more. Snape, bottom of 590. Severus Snape. Snape has been cleared by this council. He's been vouched for by Albus Dumbledore. Notice, that's all it takes for Snape to be cleared. No. Severus Snape is a Death Eater. Dumbledore stands. Severus Snape was indeed a Death Eater. But he rejoined our side, and this is why they accept Dumbledore's vouching. Before Lord Voldemort's downfall. Okay. Why is that significant? Yeah, because what happened after Voldemort fell? What did all kinds of people say? Uh, it was the Imperius curse, man. It, yeah, that wasn't me. 
No, no, the devil made me do it, so to speak, you know. Voices in my head. Okay? So, Karkaroff's released to Azkaban, not released, released. More people come in. Ludo Bagman. Why was Ludo Bagman suspected of being a Death Eater? Okay. Bagman says, in response to Crouch, do you have anything to add to your testimony before we pronounce judgment? I've been a bit of an idiot. <laughs> you never spoke a true word, Moody says. 592. Crouch says, Ludovic Bagman, you were caught passing information to Lord Voldemort's supporters. Okay, remember why Bagman's been helping Harry? Betting on him? Notice his last name? Bagman? Bagman in betting circles is the guy who carries cash from Betor to Betty, etc., or the other way around. Okay? So, Crouch suggests term in Azkaban. Bagman. But I told you, I had no idea. Old Rookwood was a friend of my dad's. Okay? He was passing information on to Rookwood. Who just gave up Rookwood before Bagman came in? Karkaroff. Never crossed my mind he was in with you-know-who. I thought I was collecting information for our side. Rookwood kept talking about getting me a job in the ministry. Once my Quidditch days are over. You know, I mean, I can't keep getting hit by bludgers for the rest of my life, can I? Titters from the crowd. Crouch, it'll be put to the vote. And what does the vote do? It acquits them, lets them off. And one which says, we'd just like to congratulate Mr. Bagman on his splendid performance for England against Turkey. Okay. <clears throat> The day Ludo Bagman joins us will be a sad day indeed for the ministry. Yes? Am I off base for getting like a McCarthyistic vibe from these scenes? How he's kind of guilty by association because he's giving information to somebody he doesn't know. You know, kind of like with the McCarthy and communism. Well, you knew this guy, so you have to be... Am I off base there? Um, <coughs> no. And the reason I say no is... Knowing Rowling's politics, um, she would love to have a, I think, a McCarthy-esque kind of character. And, and Crouch does fit that. Remember what, I almost said Severus again. Remember what Sirius tells them um, during their Hogsmeade visit about Crouch? About, you know, at the beginning he might have been good, but then he did what? Authorize the unforgivable curses. He kind of used fire to fight fire. In other words, Sirius says, you know, he became as bad as the other side. Okay. So, Bagman is let go. Door opens again. This time several people are brought in. Page 594. Four people. Thick-set man, stared blankly up at Crouch, thinner, more nervous-looking man, eyes darting around the crowd, a woman with thick, shiny, dark hair, heavily hooded eyes, sitting in the chain chair as though it were a throne, and a boy in his late teens who looked nothing short of petrified. He says, you've been brought here before the Council of Magical Law so that we may pass judgment on you for crime saying, Father, Father, shut up, you know. Heard the evidence against you, the four of you stand accused of capturing an Auror, Frank Longbottom, subjecting him to the Cruciatus curse, believing him to have knowledge of the present whereabouts. You used it on Frank Longbottom's wife when he would not give you information. She, he cries out, Mother, Mother, you know. And so Crouch says, I ask the jury to raise their hands if they believe, as I do, that these crimes deserve a life sentence in Azkaban. Everybody says yes. Little Bertie Jr. says, no, 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 I didn't do it. And Dumbledore arrives, touches Harry on the shoulder and says, let's go back to my office. Harry, I, sorry, didn't, Dumbledore, top of 597. 
quite understand. Harry, what is it? It's called a pinza. I sometimes find, I'm sure you know the feeling, I simply have too many thoughts and memories crammed into my head. Harry, uh, okay. <laughs> so he says, I use the pinza. One simply siphons the excess thoughts from one's mind, pours them into the basin, examines them at one's leisure. Easier to spot patterns and links. Harry, that's your thoughts? Certainly. And Dumbledore says, let me show you, kid. Pulls out his wand, pulls out a thought, puts it in the basin, and up comes Snape. He says, it's coming back. Karkaroff's true, stronger, and clearer. And then Bertha Jorkins comes up. Dumbledore says, it's okay, Harry. Naturally, it would have attracted your attention. That is, you're in my office alone, and there's a strange, eerie glow over there. Of course you're going to want to see it, what it is. Curiosity is not a sin, he says, 598. But we should exercise caution with our curiosity. Yes, indeed. What does he mean, exercising caution with curiosity? Curiosity doesn't mean you just jump right in. It means you approach things carefully. What did he tell Harry when Harry woke up in the hospital wing in the first book? You did do the thing right or correctly, didn't you? Meaning you did some research. You found out who Nicholas Flamel was and such. Okay? So Harry tells Dumbledore he fell asleep in divination. Dumbledore says, quite understandable. He tells us a little something about what he thinks of divination. Right. Harry tells him about his scar hurting. Finally, page 600, Dumbledore says, I've been corresponding with Sirius too. So Harry says, do you know why my scar is hurting me? He says, it's my belief your scar hurts both when Lord Voldemort is near you and when he's feeling a particularly strong surge of hatred. Why? Because you're connected by that scar, Harry. It's no ordinary scar. Harry, so you think the dream it really happened? Possible. Did you see Voldemort? Harry, well, kind of back of the chair. Do you think he's getting stronger? Voldemort, uh, Dumbledore says, bottom of 601. The years of Voldemort's ascent to power were marked with disappearances. Bertha Jorkins has vanished without a trace. In the place where Voldemort was certainly known to be last, Albania. Crouch 2 has disappeared. There is a third disappearance. Ministry doesn't pay any attention to it. Why not? Because Frank Price is a muggle. Okay. Dumbledore says they're linked. Harry says, um, could I ask you about that court thing? You could. Were they talking about Neville's parents? Has Neville never told you why he's been brought up by his grandmother? He just shakes his head. Yes, they were talking about Neville's parents. His father, Frank, was an or just like Professor Moody. He and his wife were tortured for information about Voldemort's whereabouts after he lost his powers. Harry, so they're dead? No. They are insane. They are both in St. Mungo's Hospital for Magical Maladies and Injuries. I believe Neville visits them with his grandmother during the holidays. They do not recognize him. For those of you who have read the fifth book, is that true? It's not true. We'll see when we get there. Dumbledore says the long bottoms were very long bottoms were very popular. Okay? So the attacks on them came after Voldemort's fall from power, just when everyone thought they were safe. Those attacks caused a wave of fury. What's the wave of fury? Is it then that Barty Crouch authorized the unforgivable curses? Okay. Harry asks about Snape. And Dumbledore says, that's between Professor Snape and me. Okay. So he has the third task. There's a new Rita Skeeter Scoop. And third task, Harry and Cedric go into the maze first, then Crumb, then Fleur. 
And we see crumb, imperious, and such. We're going to skip a bunch. And get to 632. The spider drops Harry. Notice, top of that page. Which means that Harry fell 12 feet onto his already injured leg. So, about two feet higher than this ceiling. That's not dropping 12 feet with your arms at 12 feet and your feet, therefore, at five or six or seven feet. That's dropping 12 feet. Okay. Cedric, you all right? No, Harry says. Leans against the hedge, gasping for breath. Cedric was standing feet from the Trial Wizard Cup, gleaming behind him. Harry, take it then. Go on, take it. You're there. Cedric looks at it, looks at Harry. You take it. You should win. It's twice you've saved my neck in here. It's not how it's supposed to work, says Harry. He felt angry. Why? His leg hurts. He aches all over. And Cedric's beating him. Again. You know, it's bad enough he beat him at Quidditch. The one who reaches the cup first gets the points. That's you. I'm not going to win any races. Cedric, no. What did Cedric's dad say about Cedric? Modest, humble. Cedric comes from which house? What are Hufflepuff's defining characteristics? They are just, loyal, true, and hard workers. Well, who's worked harder in this task? Harry or Cedric? Harry's worked harder. Cedric's there because of Harry. Right? Harry, stop being noble. Is Cedric being noble? What does Harry mean by stop being noble? He means stop trying to be noble. I think Harry, partly at least, means, come on, Cedric, you want it, take it. What Harry doesn't realize is Cedric can't stop being noble. It's part of Cedric's character. You told me about the dragons. I would have gone down in the first task. That is, let's go back to the beginning, Harry. Harry, yeah, well, I had help on that, too. You helped me with the egg. We're square. Yeah. Sorry, I still don't think the dragons and the egg thing are quite square. Harry helped him a little more than Cedric helped him. You should have got more points on the second task, says Cedric. You stayed behind to get all the hostages. I should have done that. In other words, being noble, you sacrificed, one, your opportunity to win, and two, possibly, what? Your life. Harry, I was the only one thick enough to take that song seriously. Take the cup. Cedric. No. Notice, he moves away from the cup and goes to Harry and supports him. He was walking away from the sort of glory Hufflepuff House hadn't had in centuries. Go on, says Cedric. Harry looks at Cedric, looks at the cup. He sees himself emerging from the maze holding the cup. And then he says, both of us. Still a Hogwarts win. Gryffindor and Hufflepuff. Cedric, you sure? Yeah. We helped each other out. It's the only fair solution, right? So, one, two, three. Where do they go? The Cemetery of Little Hangleton. They don't know that's where they are, but that's where they are. Turns out to be a port key. Page 637. Harry says, no. Is this supposed to be part of the task? Cedric, don't know. Wands out, do you reckon? <laughs> Harry's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Glad that Cedric had made the suggestion rather than him. Okay. Someone's coming. 
Harry couldn't make out a face, but he could tell that it's carrying something, what looks like a baby. And this figure that approaches them stops beside a towering marble headstone. So there's the marble headstone. What? Only six feet from them. So here's Wormtail carrying the little baby. And this is the headstone. Wormtail's at the headstone. And here's Cedric. And here's Harry. That's a scar. <laughs> from here to here. Six feet. All right? Harry's scar bursts. He immediately knows what's happening, but he can't say anything. We hear, kill the spear. In a voice, Avada Kedavra, blast the green light. Something heavy falls beside him to the ground. He opens his eyes, and there's Cedric, spread eagle. So now, Cedric... He's dead, okay? <laughs> but he's still six feet from the tombstone. Why? He falls where he was standing. Harry stares into Cedric's face at his open gray eyes, blank and expressionless, and the short man drags Harry toward the marble headstone. So Harry now gets dragged over here, he gets chained to this. Okay. Harry is still what? Six feet from Cedric. He's just now where the headstone was. Cedric hasn't moved. Why? He's still dead. Okay. Middle of page 639. Cedric's body was lying some 20 feet away. <laughs> what the hell happened? <laughs> Is this like Lion Witch in the wardrobe and, you know, little mice came up and picked up the body and suddenly moved it 14 feet? Did this suddenly move 14 feet? Is it that she's bad in math? Or is this just bad writing and even worse, copy editing? Yeah? Maybe. Could be. 638. Cedric was lying spread eagled on the ground beside him. Beside him does not mean I'm about 14 feet or so, not quite, from that wall. Okay. If any one of them were to drop dead right now, you would not say they are beside me. If I was like this, and then just drop dead, you say, look at that, beside him. <laughs> yes, that yeah. would be the first word. Yeah. How can that be? <laughs> okay. Anyways, now that Harry is secured, and Cedric is still dead, six feet away, excuse me, 20 feet away now, we see the, what do you call this thing? that brings Voldemort back. Because the wacko Christians, when this book, I mean, this really set them on edge. I mean, it's like black mass kind of thing. It's a resurrection of sorts, but it's an evil resurrection of sorts. Okay? So, Wormtail drops the thing into the cauldron. And Harry's thinking, let it drown, let it drown. Please, if there is anything out in the universe listening to my thoughts, let it drown. Bone of the Father, unknowingly given, you will renew your soul. And dust comes out of the grave and plops into the thing. Flesh of the servant, willingly given, you will revive your master. Not an easy thing to do, by the way, to cut your hand off, because there are bones in the wrist. You know, our fingernail. <laughs> It's yeah. A knife. yeah, it's a silver knife. I'm sure it's got some kind of charm on it. But, it, you know, if you want to know, just get on Google and, you know, Google ISIS beheading videos. If you can cut through the neck, you can easily cut the wrist off. And you can cut through the neck. I won't go any more than that. And Voldy comes back. Okay? 
and we get the chapter of the Death Eaters. So Voldemort comes back, he gets his cloak put on him, and he starts talking to Harry. Meanwhile, Peter Pettigrew's going, Mister, Mister, because he's sitting there like the Black Knight in Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> And what does Voldemort do? He gives him a new hand, a silver hand, okay? And the Death Eaters all do what? They all operate around him. And we have him name them, a whole bunch of them. One of them gets tortured, page 648, because Voldemort says, I smell guilt. And Avery, being the damn fool that he is, says, Sorry, Master! Falls down before him and gets zapped. Poor Avery, we're going to see him get zapped a couple more times. He keeps getting crucio because he hasn't learned his lesson, apparently. So, Pettigrew gets his new hand. And now I've got to move more quickly. And so he addresses all those that are there, and he says, you know, we've got several missing. Page 650, the Lestranges... They should be here, but they're in Azkaban, as are a few others. You knew Crab and Goyle were going to show up, right? I'm actually confused about that. Are they yeah. kids? No, these are their parents. Those are their last names. Yeah, these are their last names. I thought Crab and Goyle was like their first names. No. no, they're never given first names because they're, they're bookends. They are. I think one of them's first name is yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay? And then he says, bottom of 650, here we have six missing Death Eaters. Three dead. Rosier, Wilkes, and Mulsimer, I think, were the ones that were mentioned earlier. One, too cowardly to return. He will pay. Who's that? Karkaroff. One, who I believe has left me forever. Snape. He will be killed. And one, my faithful servant. Okay. So what does Voldemort do? Like every sinister bad guy in every sinister bad guy movie. He monologues when? When he's got the hero tied up, ready to kill, and what does he do? <laughs> now I'm going to lay out my whole evil plan. Why? So that the cavalry can come, you know, over the hill and rescue you. So... He talks and talks and talks and talks and talks. And he says, now Wormtail, give Harry Potter back his wand. Why? We're going to duel. You have learned to duel, right, Harry? Where did Harry learn to duel? Chamber of Secrets. Who taught him? That great duel master, Gilderoy Lockhart. So he says, we bow, Harry. He bows to Harry. Harry's like, hell with you, man. I ain't bowing to you. And he says, come on, Dumbledore, we want you to observe the niceties. We bowed. Harry dutifully bows. Okay. And then he hits Harry with the Cruciata curse. 661. A little break. That didn't hurt, did it, Harry? No, you don't want me to do that again, do you? He wants Harry to say, please don't do that again. I asked you whether you want me to do that again. Answer me, Imperio. And Harry doesn't answer. We're not playing hide and seek, Harry, because Harry, when he's brought out of the Imperius Curse, jumps behind the, you know, headstone. He says, come on, Harry, come on out and play. It'll be quick, 662. It might even be painless. I would not know. I've never died. But Harry's thinking he was not going to die crouching here like a child playing hide and seek. He was not going to die kneeling at Voldemort's feet. He was going to die upright like his father. Meaning what? Fighting. He's not going to die, one, begging for mercy, or two, like a coward. He was going to try, trying to do what? To defend himself. He's not going to try, die trying to do what? Is he going to try to kill Voldemort? No. Is he going to try to harm Voldemort? No. He's going to try to defend himself, even if no defense was possible. 
Voldemort comes out, and Harry does Expelliarmus. Notice, Harry doesn't do Impedimenta. He doesn't do a stunning spell. He doesn't do a whole bunch of spells he's already learned. Expelliarmus. What the hell is Expelliarmus going to do to Voldemort? Knock his wand out of his hand. Okay, now stop and think about this for a moment. What does Expelliarmus literally do? Two words, Expelli, Armus. It removes arms, not these kind. Okay? You need Gilderoy Lockhart for that. Yes? Didn't I say he's just throwing armors and basically shut Lockhart back to the wall? Well, they did that when they, when Harry, Ron, and Hermione did expel your armors on Snape in Prisoner of Azkaban. But it was because of the force of the three of them. Okay? It removes the weapon from your opponent. Now, I don't know if any of you are into martial arts, but there is a, a um, kind of martial art where the whole goal of it is to protect yourself by essentially using your opponent's strength against him. That is, to turn your opponent's strength into his weakness. And it's for this purpose, to protect your opponent from harming himself. What have we seen Harry repeatedly do with his so-called opponents? Malfoy, book one. He protects him. Crumb, this book. He grabs him, turns him around so that he doesn't just go blindly off into the forest into whatever danger there is. Even here, you could read this as Harry is, in a sense, protecting Voldemort. Because what happens if Voldemort does use Avada Kedavra on Harry? Let's say, and Harry's like a regular person. He's dead. What does that do to Voldemort? We're going to find out in a later book. What happens when you kill somebody? Intentionally kill them. You rip your soul. So every time you kill, you rip your soul again. And again, and again, and again, and again. Okay. We're going to find out in book six, excuse me, book seven, the soul is supposed to be intact and whole. Voldemort has shredded his. Okay. So by Harry using Expelliarmus, he might be attempting to stop that shredding, even though he is not aware at this point what happens when somebody kills. Okay. So what does happen? Avada Kedavra, killing curse, Expelliarmus, disarming curse, meet in the center. Okay? And now this light is connecting them, and what else happens? You get this big golden web around them. Voldemort yells to his supporters, do nothing. Here he hears a strange sound, an unearthly and beautiful sound, and then he realizes what it is. Phoenix song. It's the sound of hope to Harry, page 664. The most beautiful and welcome thing he had ever heard in his life. Where else has he heard this sound? Chamber of Secrets. Okay. He felt as though the song were inside him. Okay, it's the song of hope, we're told. And it's almost as though he hears a voice that says, don't break the connection. Harry, I know. I know, I know I mustn't. He doesn't know how he mustn't, but he mustn't. And we see these bulges of light on this string between the two. And the beads start coming closer and closer and closer to Harry's wand. And something in his mind tells him, don't let them connect. Push them back. 665, he concentrates every last particle of his mind upon forcing the bead back toward Voldemort. His ears full of phoenix song, his eyes furious, fixed. And he does. What's that tell us? Harry's stronger. Okay. It touches Voldemort's wand, and what happens? The wand starts to scream, and... It plops out, 
Cedric. It was Cedric. Was it a ghost? It looks so solid. Top of 666. Hold on, Harry. Harry looks at Voldemort. His red eyes are wide and shocked. More screams. A, wand, a hand pops out, you know, moving around. A body comes out. Frank Bryce. He was a real wizard and killed me that one day. You fight him, boy. Bertha Jorkins, don't let go. Don't let him get you, Harry. Don't let... How does Bertha Jorkins know who Harry is? Is Harry walking around like this? <laughs> Another head emerging. Harry knew who it was. Soon as he saw it start, his mom pops out. If you had one of the first or early printed editions of this book, James comes out first. And it was caught in the act of printing. They, she fixed it, okay, so that Lily comes out first. Lily comes out, your father's coming, hold on for your father, it will be all right, hold on. And he came. First his head, then his body, tall and tidy. And what happens? When the connection is broken, we will linger for only moments. But we will give you time. You must get to the port key. It will return you to Hogwarts. Do you understand, Harry? Okay. These are, Harry thinks, ghosts of some sort. What does Dumbledore call them later on? Echoes. Because Siri says, James, brought back to life? No, no, no. No spell can reawaken the dead. They were echoes of their former selves. The only problem with Dumbledore's, Dumbledore's explanation is an echo always does what? It just repeats. If this were an echo of James, what should it say? Lily, take Harry, run. I'll hold him off. Oh, oh, oh. Ursi, 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 Ursi. One, one, one. Because that was Cedric's last word. Uh, out, actually. One's out, do you think? They're not merely repeating, right? What did James just say? He's aware of what's... How aware is he? He knows what the port... How the hell does he know what the port key is? Were they all, you know, just trapped inside Voldemort's wand, looking out through the pores of the wood, going, oh, look, there's a port key. All Harry has to do is get to it. Tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. When we come out, <laughs> he even knows they're going to be around for a little bit when Harry breaks the connection. Okay? So what are they? Are they their souls? Or echoes of the souls? If there are such things as souls that exist after death? Are they alive or dead? Obviously they would be alive in some way. Maybe not the way we understand. But these are what? They are aware of our world real-time occurrences. Real-time action. Okay? Link this to what in the first book? The Mirror of Erised. Harry looks in the mirror at first and what does he see? A bunch of people. He does this, and the face, the, the woman's face that had been smiling and waving, is now crying. Why? Because she realized, he sees me. And the woman that is crying has the man next to her put his arm around her. Why? Because in the plane of the mirror, wherever that is, he realizes she's crying. I'm going to comfort her. Puts his arm around her. So, what does Cedric say just before Harry breaks the connection? Take my body back, will you, Harry? Now, if you were Harry, let me rephrase this. If I were Harry, I'd go, a little busy, Cedric. <laughs> we'll come back for your body, okay? We'll find out where it is. Here, I'll put a tracking device on it and, you know. Okay. 
Okay? So, Harry goes back. He wakes up, 672, 73. Says, cup was a port key. Dark Lord's back, killed Cedric. As Moody is taking him along. Bottom of 675. Moody takes him to his office. And says he forgave them. Harry, what? I asked you whether he forgave this guy who never even went to look for him. You know, those who fled at the sight of the dark mark when I fired in the sky. Harry, what? I told you, Harry. I told you. If there's one thing I hate more than any other, it's a death eater who walked free. Harry's like, this can't be happening. Bottom of 676. Moody is talking. Says it hasn't been easy, Harry, guiding you through these tasks without arousing suspicion. I've had to use every ounce of cunning I possess. Dumbledore would have been very suspicious if you had managed everything too easily. He says, you know, but I also had to contend with your stupidity. The second task, that was when I was most afraid we would fail. I was keeping watch on you, Potter. I knew you hadn't worked out the eggs clue, so I had to give you another hint. Well, it wasn't you, it was Cedric. Who told Cedric to open it underwater? I did. I trusted he would pass the information on to you. Why? Decent people are so easy to manipulate. Why are decent people easy to manipulate? Louder? Predictable? Why are they predictable? They'll do what's right. That is, decent people don't expect people to be indecent. People, decent people don't expect people to act rottenly. Okay? He said, you know, I, I figured the second task. I gave your friend the book. But did Neville share anything about water plants on the Mediterranean with Harry? No. Okay. And Dumbledore bursts into the room, page 679. And we get this wonderful little description. At that moment, Harry fully understood for the first time why people said, said Dumbledore was the only wizard Voldemort had ever feared. The look upon Dumbledore's face as he stared down at the unconscious form of Mad-Eye Moody was more terrible than Harry could ever have ever imagined. No benign smile upon Dumbledore's face. No twinkle in the eyes behind the spectacles. In other words, Santa's gone away. And he's been replaced by his twin evil brother. Cold fury in every line of the ancient face. A sense of power radiated from Dumbledore. Okay? So, Dumbledore takes Harry off to his office. Said, tells McGonagall to stay there with um, crouch after he puts him under the Veritas serum and they get his information from him okay. we find out Marty Crouch Jr. killed his father so um, 694.95 Dumbledore tells Harry 694.95 I need to know what happened after you touched the port key, Harry. Serious, come on, Dumbledore. That can wait till the morning. No, you can't. Dumbledore says, if I thought I could help you by putting you into an enchanted sleep and allowing you to postpone the moment when you'd have to think about what had happened tonight, I would do it. But I know better. Numbing the pain for a while will make it worse when you finally feel it. If you ever physically had something like that happen, you get a broken bone, you get something really bad, and the doctor initially numbs the pain so you don't feel it, and then you have to get the bone set. It's worse the second time around. Okay. You have shown bravery beyond anything I could have expected of you. I ask you to demonstrate your courage one more time. Tell us what happened. So Harry tells him. Harry, he said, top of 696, my blood would make him stronger than if he'd used someone else's. He said the protection my mother left me, he'd have it too. And he was right. He could touch me. 
For a fleeting instant, Harry thought he saw a gleam of something like triumph in Dumbledore's eyes. Now, when this book first came out, there was all kinds of speculation on discussion boards and internet, you know, things that this showed Dumbledore was in cahoots with Voldemort. People were thinking, Dumbledore's going, yes, he's got it. He figured it out. Okay? Turns out to be just the opposite. So, Dumbledore explains what happens with Priori and Cantata. Serious. Diggory came back to life. No spell can reawaken the dead. These were just um, echoes. Other forms appeared. Harry tells him. Okay. So Molly shows up. And we hear Fudge yelling outside. Dumbledore asks McGonagall, what's going on? You're supposed to be with Barty Crouch. And what has Fudge done? Dementor's kiss. Fudge, page 703. By all accounts, he is no loss. It seems he's been responsible for several deaths. Notice what Fudge is saying there. Eh, so what? He's dead. He's crazy. No loss. Dumbledore, but he can't give testimony now. He cannot give evidence about why he killed him. He killed him because he's crazy. Dumbledore says Voldemort was giving him instructions. Okay. Fudge disagrees. 705. You are prepared to believe that Lord Voldemort has returned on the word of a lunatic murderer. Notice, by the way, and I think that's the only time, Fudge uses the name Voldemort. Every other time, it's he who must not be named. What's going through Fudge's mind when he says that? A boy who is having seizures, spells, fainting. Where does Fudge get his information from? <clears throat> the Daily Prophet. So Dumbledore, after Harry names names on 6706, he names the Death Eaters. What does Fudge say? Those were the names of people who were acquitted years ago. You could have gotten that out of news archives, essentially. Old reports of the trials. Page 707. Voldemort has returned. If you accept that fact straight away, Fudge, take the necessary measures. We may still be able to save the situation. Okay. First and foremost, you got to get the Dementors out of control of Azkaban. Why? Because, man, they love Voldemort. He brings them food. Okay? What's his next idea? Bring the giants back. And Fudge is like, yeah, right. Okay? 708, Dumbledore. You are blinded by the love of the office you hold, Cornelius. You place too much importance, and you always have done, on the so-called purity of blood. You fail to recognize it matters not what someone is born, but what they grow to be. What did Barty Crouch Jr. grow to be? Death Eater. And yet he came from one of the oldest, most established, most respected families. Okay? Jump to the end of Book 7. What does Draco Malfoy grow to be? A decent person. Are he and Harry going off to the pub every night having drinks? No. <laughs> okay? But he's showing us that they can change. So that's when, after Fudge leaves, gives Harry his galleons, that's when Dumbledore says to Molly, alert the old crowd. Who's the old crowd? And who, who does that include? Lupin? Weasleys? Partially, but it's not really. The Weasleys weren't in the Order of the Phoenix before. Arabella Fig, Harry's crazy old babysitter, okay, Mundungus Fletcher, and a variety of others that we'll meet in the next book. Okay, we are going to try and finish Order of the Phoenix in three days, so I am going to have to skip a lot. <laughs>